Only a week later than you were planning, Phil. Oh, good grief, tell me. He's all Tom Beck, did you get snow? We, oh yeah, we got snow. We didn't, a lot of the other parts of New England did. It, it dropped down to 38, which was pretty cold. It's up to 45 now. It's about where we are too. 80 Barry, degrees you, out here. Barry, did you get some snow? Well, sort of. We had yeah. white stuff falling out of the sky, but it's not staying on the ground. Yeah. It's all lake effect stuff because we're huh. we're in the middle of the Great Lakes and there's a lot of funny microclimates caused by having all these big bodies of water surrounding you. So Yeah. Phil, you must have gotten some snow though. Yeah, but it didn't stay. It's pretty much gone now. Well, it, yeah, but still, it's May. But it was it was snowing sideways. <laughs> <laughs> we had so we had a lot of wind. It's calmed down now. Well, it's still blowing up here pretty good. Hello, Stan and Senior Boss. It's well, he only got hail this year. He's not saying anything because he knows it's true. Yeah, I just agree with you. <laughs> We're all a talkative bunch, but we're almost, it's time and we're up to 23 people. Um, I'm assuming that we will get a few more because we generally average that, but why don't we try and create a reputation that's different than my personal one and start on time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember years ago. Who are ago, you and what did you do with the real Don Beck? <laughs> I remember many years ago, this is a quick aside, but when I got my first digital watch and at lunchtime I was talking to my boss and telling him how great it is and telling him how accurate it was. And he said, does that mean that you're going to be on time from now on? And I said, no, but I'm going to know exactly how late I am. <laughs> anyway, with that, um, our guest presenter, I don't know what we should call Barry, but Barry Clasper from um, Toronto, which is in a different country from me, but still the same <laughs> continent, um, has been doing an awful lot with something called the Caller Lab Knowledge Base. Um, and somehow I think there are an awful lot of people that don't have knowledge of it. Uh, but Barry is going to make us aware of some of the resources that callers have on online, um, I think most of you, well, no, most of you don't know, who knows? But there's an awful lot of information available of all sorts. Sometimes it's repeated here and there. Um, Barry is going to give us a quick presentation on, or not a quick one, it doesn't have, you can talk normally. <laughs> you don't have to talk fast, Barry, sorry about that. Um, on different online resources and then focus on the knowledge base, which I think refers to a lot of the other resources. Um, and, and he's been doing a lot of work on, and I use it occasionally to look for things not as often as I should, but I guess that's more than an introduction or a babbling than I needed. So take it away, Barry. Barry Glasper, Toronto. Thanks, Don. <clears throat> so hopefully everybody can hear me. I see Zoom lit my, uh, my square up, so obviously Zoom thinks I'm talking. So I'm going to share my screen so that I can uh, show you the... So yes, I'm sharing my screen and I don't care about computer. Well, maybe I will computer. share computer sound because it's possible some of the places we go might have sound. So hopefully you are looking at uh, screen right now. Is that true? Is that what you're saying? We're seeing some kind of a browser. Can't tell whether it's Firefox, but I'll take your word. Yeah, well, the type of browser doesn't really matter, but uh, <laughs> I figured. so the way to get at the knowledge base is by typing knowledge. And there you can see it pops up there, knowledge.collarlab.org. 
So that is the website. Now you'll notice when I click on that, you go to a page that says this site has moved. Um, it hasn't moved. This is where it's always been. That page was never supposed to appear. I mean, it is a redirect, but uh, when uh, I originally built this, I pulled it off, had it over in its, its own domain, and the plan was always to make it part of the Color Lab website. But uh, so far, that has not happened. So you'll see that little redirect. Um, and if you really want, you can go here directly. You can see it at the top of the, of the screen what the actual uh, URL is. My preference is don't use it because sooner or later, <laughs> we'll get our act together and this will be pulled on over the, under the Color Lab website and this domain will go away. So if you always get at it by going to knowledge.colorlab.org, um, you'll find you will always find it, no matter where you wind up putting it. Um, I hate to interrupt, but I tend to do that, Barry. So I, I just want to mention to everybody, if there's something in your mind of how can I, or what did you do to get that, or why bother, or what have you, just jot it down in, in our discussion part. Um, you'll have quite time to ask Barry these questions. Or, or if something you know occurs to you, or something I said confuses you, feel free to butt in. We've got a small enough group that that can be done. Um, and actually, I will by the end of the the uh, the little talk I'm going to do here, I will be soliciting things to hunt for to sort of give you an idea how to navigate your way around <coughs> in the website. Now, I'm going to start with a brief commercial. So what you're looking at here is um, the body of a report that I just sent off to the Color Lab uh, board about what's been going on with the knowledge base uh, lately. And uh, you will see that, actually, can I, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that because it's blocking my screen, but it won't go away. Huh, interesting. Maybe Dan can tell me how to get rid of the little sidebar that's sitting over top of my uh, my document here. <laughs> you mean to the right there? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Can you not drag the uh, like drag I the just slider? Tried, I tried thumbnail, hide thumbnail video, and did, try minimize. It go, now it goes. Okay. Fine. So. <laughs> Uh, the reason I went here is because I just wanted to give you a sense of, of what's going on with the knowledge base uh, statistically. So you can see this statement here that as of April 30th, 2020, it contained 237 articles. Um, and uh, that represents an increase over 195 from the same time last year. And uh, as of April 2020, there were 5,316 unique visitors that appeared in April 2020, and there were 7,647 page views uh, on the site, which uh, represented a 74 and 77 percent increase over the same month last year. So you can see that it's it, more and more people are discovering it is what that means, and that we are getting a, a fair degree of, of activity happening. If um, you're curious about what people look for on this site, there's a little table that shows the top 25 articles that have, were accessed in the previous 90 days. Um, and just to give you an idea of what people are looking at, it's interesting, the top four are Caller Lab documents. There's this video recording index points to a bunch of video recordings of Caller Lab information sessions. I think there's 240 some, if I remember right, I might have that wrong. The audio recording index is also um, Caller Lab uh, information sessions from Caller Lab conventions. There's 904 of those, I believe. Um, this program documents one that you you can see is um, a collection of all the documents that pertain to Caller Lab dance programs. So. We can visit that if you want to see what it really looks like. But um, basically, if you want to find out 
what documents pertain to basic mainstream, there's a button, you click on it and they all appear. So uh, you can find them quickly by going to that document. And there's things like the list of all the caller schools for 2020, which I is probably no longer uh, true at all. Sustainable Square Dance Teaching Guide. There's a bunch of stuff here that was contributed by Bruce Holmes. Is Bruce on the call? I've seen him on previous editions, but I don't know if he's on today. Um, from North Shore Squares, he's built a lot of uh, material around uh, SSD and uh, he was kind enough to contribute it all. Lots of stuff about modules. Yak tech stack speakers. Obviously, Scott has had some some traction with uh, advertising, so people are starting to look for his speakers. But that gives you an idea of the kind of stuff that people are are looking for, and the sort of stuff that's there. So, anybody have any questions about anything they can see on the screen there? Just before I go away with it. Okay. Yeah, Barry. The, yeah. the one thing you, you skipped over it, but the one thing I would like to mention in the knowledge database is a lot of those documents and a lot of those resources that are available, they do have hyperlinks to the actual source websites, but also some of the program documents are available to the public, but a lot of this is generally accessible by members only. So you have to be a Color Lab member to actually get into the website. Oh, that's not true. Oh, it's, it's no longer a members only area. It's never been a members only area. Well, that's unusual. Well, actually, this is, was this, a is a good, this is a good segue into my next, uh, yeah. next topic. So I'm just yeah, going we, to- We planned this. that. <clears throat> just going to kill this window. So hopefully what you're now looking at is the Caller Lab uh, or the uh, Knowledge Base homepage. Now- Barry, I'm going to interrupt you for a sec. I missed how you got to the search for what people are searching for. Oh, that was a separate document. That was a report that I, I made to the Color Lab Board of Governors just recently. And if you're a Color Lab member, you will see it uh, reproduced in the next flash direction, which I believe is coming out in the next week or so. Thanks. So it's not, that, it's not part of the database at all. And I only went there to give you a sense of what the activity is like and what people are looking at and, and that sort of thing. Uh, to give you a little bit more uh, background on where this came from, back in uh, 2015 at the Color Lab convention, we had a, um, a brainstorming session. And the, the, the design for um, our opening meeting we got everybody together and we had literally a brainstorming uh, uh, session soliciting ideas about things that could be done to make square dancing better. That was kind of the directive that we gave them. And the idea of the whole thing was we were going to collect what we thought would be, you know, a few ideas um, that we could then present later on at the later on in the convention and get people talking about them so we could flesh them out and maybe take some action on them. Well, it didn't turn out that way. Uh, what we got was 430 some, or maybe it was 470 some, I forget now, um, ideas and suggestions, which, you know, were hard to categorize. And some of them were big ideas and some were little ideas and, and you know, they were all over the map in terms of the subject matter and the th things about square dancing that they dealt with. And there was no way that within the time frame of the convention that we could distill that down into something that we could talk about at convention. Um, so I went away from convention with this big list of stuff <laughs> that we I promised at the uh, at the end of the convention in my uh, my last speech to the convention I promised that I would um, make this available somewhere. So I that was love that that yeah. That was the beginning of this uh, knowledge base. Um, I had a lot of false starts trying to figure out what I was going to do with this. The first thing I did is put it in a spreadsheet. And uh, I thought, well, I can just share the spreadsheet. And that clearly became um, impract not impractical, but just not particularly useful. 
Um, and as I mulled it over and thought about it, it uh, you know, the idea grew and grew. And so by, I think I first got it up in November of 2015, the brainstorming session happened in uh, April, I think of 2015. So it took me that long to kind of get something put together and the initial thing published. But that's where it came from. And it's grown from there. So the masthead says it all. This is all about sharing ideas and experiences for the betterment of square dancing. The whole idea of this site is to just collect information that's generated by our community for things that we think will make square dancing better and, and sharing it with the world. And uh, we're doing this under the, the auspices of Collar Lab, but this is not um, this shouldn't be interpreted as Color Lab endorsing anything or uh, urging the sale of something or saying this is the right way to do it. All we're doing is we're collecting information and presenting it for people to make their own assessment as to whether what the value of something is. So we've got all this stuff in there. And uh, on the front page here, this is the front page you're looking at. Um, it says that we've got 235 articles grouped in 25 categories and described with 44 different information tags. So those of you who looked at the, that report with a keen eye may have noticed that the report said there was 237 articles. And uh, at the time I wrote the report, that was true. So the count of articles is not particularly important because it varies. Um, I did a, ran a link checker a few days ago and it found a couple of dead links. So I took those articles away so that uh, hopefully it's not too often the case that you uh, go looking for something in here and then you find that the, the pointer to the whatever the collateral is uh, doesn't work. So that is always changing. A lot of these articles are um, simply pointers to other things. And a lot of them are long lists of pointers to other things. So for instance, you saw that the top item in the report um, of the most accessed items was the video index of, of the Color Lab um, information sessions. Well, as I said, there's 200 and some items in that one list. So really what we're looking at here is a collection of thousands of pointers to things of various sorts. And uh, given that we've got that much stuff that we could need to navigate around in, I've tried to provide um, multiple ways to navigate around in the, in the material. Sort of, I tried to imagine how people's brains might work <laughs> and, uh, and provide a way for people that think in that particular fashion to find a logical way in. And uh, one of the things I've constantly uh, requested is that you know if people go looking for something and can't find it if they would let me know so that i can a find out if it's in there and i just didn't provide a logical way to find it for somebody or if it's not in there and it should be there and i can go get it hopefully um but i i get very little um very little overtures of that sort and you may notice that in the blue text here, it says contact us by clicking here. If you've got uh, information that for, for suggestions for content, or if you can't find what you're looking for. And there's another place down at the bottom where it sends, it says send an email by clicking here. And if you click on that, it actually pulls up your, whatever your email program is, gets you ready to send me a note. How many notes would you think I might have gotten since 2015? The answer is one. One whole note came to me through that mechanism, which I find immensely disappointing. But uh, I don't know, maybe people don't really have questions explained. Okay. Do new articles appear in the knowledge base? Well, I put them in. So that's how they get there. Um, and I put things in that I find or that people tell me about, which is why the please to send me information because you know I I 
cast my net out there and I probably caught 99% of the stuff I'm liable to, to catch with my so, network of contacts. So you, you're the gatekeeper then and then via the website, if somebody discovers something cool or writes something cool, they would uh, make it available to you and then you would um, decide whether it's worth putting on the knowledge base and so on. That's true. That's okay. exactly right. Cool. And uh, Gerhard, I noticed he was on the call who, who presented last week. Um, I saw his, his uh, presentation and I thought, okay, that's something that should be in the knowledge base. So I contacted him and he uh, kindly agreed to let me put the information in there. And uh, now it's in here and maybe we'll go looking for it and you can sort of understand how you go looking for things. And so, I also owe you a, uh, an article. So <laughs> there's yes, Dan, and you do. Get with it, Dan. I sent, I sent Dan a note too, and uh, he hasn't gotten, well, he answered me back and uh, said, said he would send fuller information, but uh, hasn't gotten back to me yet. Okay, so let's, let's look at how this works. So the first thing to be aware of is if you, if you look at this landing page here, um, there's four buttons on the bottom that all have more information under them. And my aim here is to provide somebody who has never seen this before with all the information that they need to navigate this thing. Um, so I'd, I'd really appreciate it if, as you're using it, if you have a question, go here first. <laughs> so that I don't get flooded with uh, a lot of notes asking questions about stuff that's right in here. So just to show you the kind of stuff that's in there, there's a little discussion first under this about the knowledge base, about what it is and kind of what the articles are like. And uh, it makes the statement that they are not tested for quality or judged for value. That assessment is up to you, the reader. Um, so, you know, this is the disclaimer section. Then there's a section on how to use the knowledge base that talks about a lot of what I'm going to just show you quickly here, um, how the masthead works and how searching and navigating works and uh, how you can go about finding things that way. The, um, it talks about what a category is and what the categories are and uh, how they're, they're organized, what their hierarchies are. Gotta go. See you guys. Bye. Should have been talking faster, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it shows you what information tags uh, there are in alphabetical order and how much the, the number in parens here shows you how many articles there are with that particular tag on it. So all of that stuff is on this front landing page. You don't spend that much time on this landing page, hopefully. Most of the Gary, time you come, you're looking for something and you're going to navigate away from here. Yeah? Barry, I don't know if I've ever seen that tags page before. That looks like it's worth exploring. Looks good. Yeah, it appears in a couple of other places too. So there are three main ways to navigate this thing. So first up at the top here, you have what I call the masthead which has a bunch of categories. Each one of these is a link that takes you to another page that has information on it that's uh, of a certain sort. So that masthead appears on every single page that you will get to. Down here on the right, you'll see a tag cloud and this shows all the tags that are associated with uh, items in the in the database. Now, for those of you who may, maybe not familiar with the idea of a tag, um, a tag is it's think of it as as a as a, a sticky that you know when you're reading a, a book and you're you want to mark places where uh, something might be of interest to you, you put a little sticky on the page. Um, so this is a sticky that gets put on an article that has information in it related to what the tag is. So if there's an article that has information about advertising, then it would have the advertising tag attached to it. And this is attached manually. So this becomes my judgment of whether or not this article has pertinent information about whatever the tag is talking about. 
the size of the word, this is what tag clouds are all about, indicates the number of items that have that tag. And hopefully you can see the little teeny box that popped mm -hmm. up as I hover here. And it says, there, yeah, okay. it says there's 92 topics in documentation. 92 topics. Oh. Well, that's what the theme calls them. This is all done in WordPress. Um, so there were, I won't go into what that implies for those of you who never worked with WordPress, but it means that there, there are some things in it that I really would like to change, but I just can't. I'm sort of stuck with what, uh, what the theme imposes on me. But that's basically the way this works. So all of these words represent a link that will take you to a page that shows you all the items that have that tag on. Now up at the top of that sidebar on the right, there is a search bar. And it works the way most search bars do. Um, down here in how to use the knowledge base, there's uh, quite a bit of detail on the nature of the search. You can do Boolean searches. Um, so you can do things like search on, for instance, you can search on a phrase. Let's search on Don Beck. You see Don Beck pops up because I've searched on him before. I did that so I could be sure that something popped up when I searched on Don Beck. So if you wanted to find out all the articles that Don Beck may have, um, that are in the, in the knowledge base that have some reference to Don Beck, you could search on Don Beck. So let's see what pops up. So this is the search results screen. And you can see it popped up seven hits. The first one, you wouldn't really think has much to do with Don Beck. We can go look at that in a minute. There's the out of sight book. So those of you who know Don, that he wrote this great book called Out of Sight. And there's an article about how you can go get it. Controlling choreography with relationships. That doesn't really sound like Don Beck, does it? Introduction to mental choreography. So Don Beck provides an introduction to mental choreography to the caller coach committee. So that's obviously a presentation of some kind. This caller lab convention video recording index pops up, mentions Don Beck. You'll find that these two recording indexes will pop up very often in your searches because there's so much material in them that you know they they satisfy just about every search you could think of there's something in there about it visit with the legends he's considered one of the legends and he was one of the subjects so let's look at um something where it's not clear where dawn might be referenced so if we go to this behind the mic newsletter uh item so i click on that this is what an looks like in the knowledge base. So as I said, an article might be some information in its own right within the article, or it might just really be a pointer to, you know, a brief description of what the information, what the article is about, and then a pointer off to somewhere else. Um, this one is a little bit of both. It's got a pointer to this behind the mic website which has all the archives for the Behind the Mic newsletter. I don't know how many of you are aware of that or not, but uh, I know Mel is because he writes or voluminously for it. Um, but Barry Wanson edits and publishes this on, I think he tries to make it once a month, and uh, he mostly does that. And uh, I had been bothering him for some time to provide me with some kind of a list of the table of contents of all the stuff he had in his archives so that people could search on it in the knowledge base. And uh, eventually I just went to all the con tables of contents for his uh, newsletters and I scraped them into this article that you're looking at now. And uh, so now you can search on the, the, the text that's in the tables of contents to go to the newsletter that contains that item. So if you click on this button down here, this is what you get. So presumably somewhere in here, Don Beck's name appeared. And it's, if you look at the slider over on the right here, you can see this is a long, long page. So hunting for that 
and by just using scanning with your eyes is uh, very prone to error. So we would like to find the Don Beck text in this page. Now you don't wanna go back here and enter Don Beck in, in the search box because that's searching the entire database. And all that'll happen is you'll get that search page back again. Um, we've already been there. So we wanna search this page that we're looking at and you do that with the browser's search. So if you do a control F in Firefox, you get this little uh, search uh, box down at the bottom. It says find in page. If you're on Chrome or something, I think it says something else. So let's type in Don Beck. And I got Don out and already it's found Don Beck. There's an article he, of his called Non-Destructive Testing. That's in the edition um, from July, 2017. Now these ed edition markers are actually links to that particular edition. So if I click on that, it opens a new tab and here's the behind the mic edition for July, 2017. And here's the same um, table of contents that uh, we saw. And here's non-destructive testing by Don Beck. If you and this is uh, searchable the way that uh, Barry's put this together in the archive. So you can click on that and it takes you right to the article. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so I keep getting these, so I'm killing that, uh, that tab. I keep getting this stuff from Zoom popping up over things I need to click on. So that's what it's like to search on something and you know get a list of hits and then go to one of the go to one of the items. If you have a sort of a general topic and you want to get an idea what's there, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. You could, for instance, go to let's pick lesson systems. So if I click on this lesson systems um, tag over on the right, it pulls up a list that shows all the things that are tagged with lesson systems. So here's all the articles and you see the actual description part of the article that have lesson systems tagged onto them. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but there were 47 of them and they're all displayed like this. And some of them, as you can see, are kind of long. There's the behind the mic newsletters again, they're there. Facebook stories about using sustainable square dance. And it goes on and on and on and on. So if you're looking some, for something specific, this may not be the way to go. But if you want to kind of browse and, and get a quick idea with descriptions of what a particular topic area has, uh, or in it that's related to something you're interested in, this is one way you could do it. So that's what a tag looks like. The other way you could go is by going through one of these categories in the masthead. So for instance, if I, what these categories are, are, are very general, broad categories of material. The difference between a something that's tagged and something that's in a category is when an item appears in, in a category, the implication is that it's largely about whatever the subject matter is. If something is tagged, it means it, it's got some relationship to what the subject matter is, but the actual article may, may have other things in it as well. If you search on something, all that's telling you is that the text you search on appears in the article. So for instance, if you search on music, you would get a bunch of hits and some of them may just happen to mention the word music in passing and have nothing to do with music actually. Um, so that's kind of the, the relationship of the three ways of getting in there. So let's look at developing dancers. So if you click on developing dancers, this takes you to a home page that tells you what the developing dancers category is all about. And it actually 
again, shows you a list. It's a little different format of list, but shows you a list of all the things that are there under developing dancers. And as you can see, there's five or, I'm not sure how many pages there are in there. Yeah, there's more than five probably. Do you see this little synopsis? Now that isn't, again, isn't always a helpful way to hunt for something. So if you click on this button that says subcategories developing dancers, you can see what subcategories appear under the idea of developing dancers. So developing dancers is about how do you recruit, how do you train, uh, retention of dancers, how do you build clubs, um, how do you uh, plan for specific square dance events, lesson plans, teaching methods, that kind of stuff is what you would find in, under developing dancers. And you'll notice that one of the categories is lesson systems, which will correspond very closely to lesson systems over here, although maybe not. Here you see it's 47, and here lesson systems was only 39. And that's again because the things that appear in the category are more, the, the whole article is likely to be about lesson systems, whereas under the lesson systems tag, it, the articles have something in them somewhere that pertains to lesson systems, but maybe they're not entirely devoted to the lesson systems. Gary? Another way to look at what's in there that may be a little, uh, a little better if you're looking for something specific is this list of article titles under developing dancers. And that just lists alphabetically all the articles that appear under developing dancers. Gary, if I can interrupt for a moment. Sure. Um, I'm just looking at the clock and I'm wondering if we can leave some time for discussion or people asking questions. I actually have a couple. But, and I yeah, no, I'm, I'm just about finished the, uh, the overall thing okay. now. So you're, once again, your segue, segue is complete. So you've seen how to, what it looks like to go find something by a tag. You've seen what it looks like to do a search and you've seen what the inside of a category looks like. So something I would like to uh, do as kind of an exercise now is I just told you that Gerhardt now has an entry in the knowledge base about his caller toolbox. So if you were to come here, you, you, you've heard about this thing, but you don't know where to find it or anything more about, about his website or who he is, how would you go about finding it? Give me, a, give me an idea, anybody. Well, I heard a chime, but that's all. <laughs> I just typed in Gerhard in the search box. Oh, you're already there. Okay, um, so you typed in Gerhard in the search box. Let me do and, that so everybody can see it. And I got caller toolbox. So that was the quick way in. If you knew that Gerhardt was the guy that had written it. And so you get a hit on caller toolbox, you click on that and it brings this article up. So the article describes what the toolbox is. And a lot of these words I took right off uh, Gerhardt's website. And it's got a link to his website so that you can go there and see the information on how to load it, download it and what it is and all that stuff. I'm guessing that you would type in software. So somebody might what search on software or. Yeah, I use the search box frequently. So. Okay. I, I think that probably most people go to the search box first, unless they're browsing. Uh, meaning, well, they're just looking to see kind of what's in there or yeah. what sorts of things are under a certain category. Then, but when people are looking for something specific, I, I'm guessing they, they mostly search. So let's search on software. There's that recording index again. Enticing new callers, managing dances with Squareview, Goldwave music editing software. So I managed to write that article without once seeing the word software. So that didn't work. So what would be your next shot? Toolbox. 
or maybe even just tools. This is going to be a big result page. And you can see there's a lot more hits for the word tool. And for some reason, that is there. Well, now I'm embarrassed. So the live demo curse works. <laughs> you were asking. Well, maybe try to toolbox. I'll try putting it. It should pick up tool. So it's not there either. You were asking for suggestions. Just a sec. I have to write myself a note. <laughs> Why is this happening? Or put it in the chat and save the chat. Okay, so how do you save the chat? How do you save the chat? Mm -hmm. It's the three dots okay. where you are going to write in a chat. There's an option. Oh. So it's not picking up the uh, the components of color toolboxes. Normally, you, you could. Doing, are you doing full word search then on it? Is it somehow just doing looking for full words? No, it shouldn't be. It'll pick up pieces of words too, and other places it does. So that's why I'm puzzled. Now it's time to tag those, Barry. <laughs> yeah. No, I just wrote myself a note. Okay, so one other thing I wanted to go over, there are two other Caller Lab websites that um, you really should be aware of if you're not already. There's a teaching website um, that's at teaching.callerlab.org that basically has teaching information for all the calls uh, up to mainstream and they're working on PLUS right now. And that website is pointed to in the knowledge base. So if you know that Caller Lab has a, a website that has something to do with teaching, how might you go about finding it in the knowledge base? In the uh, tag cloud under teaching? Type teaching. Under teaching dancers? Okay, teaching dancers. 59 topics. And here's this big, hairy, long list. Now we could do a search within this page. If, can you think of anything else that you might search on to narrow it sort of? For instance, you, you know it's a, you know it's a website, true? Let's try searching on website. Well, that produced seven matches. None of them seem to be it. What specifically are we looking for again? We're looking for the, the Caller Lab website that's dedicated to teaching. So this this is not uncommon, right? I mean, you pull all this stuff up and you think, man, I don't want to have to wade through all that. So what, how else could I go at it? 
I would use a Boolean caller lab plus teaching. Okay. So we want caller lab. It has to have the word caller lab in it. Just caller lab plus teaching. If you put the plus in front of caller lab, you're gonna it's gonna the the plus simply means that forces that word to be present. And if you put caller lab plus teaching, then it forces teaching to be present, but not caller lab. Really? It's a little it, it's it's a little strange implementation of the uh, the Boolean search algorithms. But ah, well, that was a good good way to go at it. Caller Lab online teaching resource. You mean we have to have a session on Boolean? <laughs> well, the the implementation that this tool that I'm using makes of Boolean is a little strange in my eyes, but. I, I so I'm just clicking on this uh, Caller Lab online teaching resource thing, and it's taking a while. I'm not sure why. So is there a help on how to search? Yes. Remember on the front page under where it says, I'll go back, how to use this knowledge base. You go down, searching and navigating, search. There's this whole paragraph on how to go about searching. So yes. It's buried in that one paragraph. So Barry? Yeah. There's some other online resources and when we spoke, I think you mentioned you have some of those listed. Um, are those listed? Do you well, they're not quote listed. They're in here like this. They're there to be found. But okay. one of the things I wanted to do, but the reason I'm asking this the way I am is because I wanted to find out if they, they're really as easy to find as I hope they are. So this is the article in, in the knowledge base on the online teaching resource, but it's not the teaching resource itself. So there's a link to the teaching resource. And I just want to show this to you because this is something you really should be aware of if you're not. This is put together by Dottie Welsh, who's the uh, chair of the Choreographic Applications Committee. Okay. And uh, the way this is organized is that you can click on the program that you want to uh, see the calls for. So let's click on mainstream just because it's a little shorter. And for each call, the pages that do all of these things that you see here. So there's the call definition, the standard applications for the call, a call analysis kind of evaluation of the call, like as if you filled out the call analysis sheet, some modules that use the call, teaching tips about the call, other miscellaneous stuff. And for some of them, there's extended applications of the call. So for instance, if you picked turn through and you clicked on define, you get a caller definition of turn. Now these are the I saw on the earlier page, it provides them and in each call so that you don't have to keep going back to it again. So there's standard applications, call analysis information, Hands needed at the start, hands at the end, body flow, good preceding calls, good following calls, modules that use the call, just a few, like you're not gonna get a whole herd of, of, uh, of choreography, but um, they are there. Teaching tips. Not sure what she's got another here. Oh, here we go. Swing through and turn through contra. So here she's got a contra dance that uses the swing through, turn through move. So you could actually teach it as part of another, um, you know, use contras as a teaching tool for, for turn through. And does she have any extended applications? Teaching some extended applications. So again, she's got some choreography that uses the the, the uh, turn through call in maybe a slightly more than, than basic manner. 
But that's what you find in this Caller Lab teaching resource. And I think it's, it's really a, a valuable thing to, to know about. For those of you out there who haven't used it, I've used it a lot. Just make sure you check the choreography. <laughs> Other than it's been great. Yeah, the, um, the caveat about checking the choreography, of course, goes for any choreography that you read in a note service or online or, or wherever you get it from. Um, check it yourself. Um, so that you, first of all, so that you know that it works and that it's, it's correct. And second of all, so that you understand how it works and that you know where it's appropriate to use it. That last part is, is really important. It just don't call it unless you know what it, what you're calling. Yeah. So a slight digression here, but I saw Dottie Welch and uh, one of my one of the thing, resources from her that has made it well into my little purple calling notebook is she's got a bunch of singing call figures in calling, caller lab teaching order that are wonderfully timed out and all the way through A2. And they've disappeared from her website, I think because she's changed email addresses or something. And I can't find them on the caller lab knowledge base. If you could hit her up for those PDFs, that would be awesome. Are they are they different to what it, what's in the teaching resource? I, I didn't see what I was looking for in the teaching resource. They're, um, yeah, they're the specific, they're, she's got a whole set of singing call figures. Oh. That are, yeah, they, um, you know, one featured, two featured, uh, plus figures. And uh, they might be in the modules, but the I think they're in. I think they're in the modules because she's okay. got. Yeah, well, no, that doesn't look there. like that doesn't look like them. They're they're PDFs. They're clearly something that she laid out for her per, her uses, but from the standpoint of a new newer caller, they're also laid out with you know dots for timing. Um, they're wonderful, yeah. and I've passed them around to a bunch of people. Uh, even as they've disappeared off her website. So if well, you can extract those her, from her, that'd be awesome. Her, um, her email address is right here on the page. And uh, I, I will hit her up for that then. So hit her up for it. Yeah. And, and actually, if you get them from her and uh, it, is, it isn't somewhere else, um, I'll put it in the knowledge base. Cool. That's how I get material. Yes. <laughs> Now, one other thing that I wanted to point out, for those of you who do, um, who do party nights, um, and one night stands of one kind or another, there's another Caller Lab database or, or website called dances.callerlab.org. It is also here in the, in the knowledge base. I'll let you figure out how to find it, but it's uh, a great, uh, tool if you're if you do very much in the way of party nights or you, actually maybe maybe even better if you don't do that many party nights so that you're hunting for material and trying to figure out stuff you might do if you uh, somehow wind up doing one so i will leave that as an exercise for the reader unless you guys want to try searching for it now so i'll leave it open for questions it's you know, I, I would, there were, there are a bunch of other, as I mentioned, um, resources online as well as yours. And I guess I would like to throw a, um, a shout out to those or, or list them. And actually I put them, I just typed some of them in. So if you could do an un sharing, un share. Share your screen, and now I can share mine. Um, all I can do is find out which thing to share. Here we go. Try a double tip. Click. So, basically, can you all see my my short list here? Can anyone see my short list? Yep. Okay. Yes. So, callerlab.org is the place to go for lots of things. Some of the main things I go there is what's what's currently on the mainstream list, what's currently on the plus list, et cetera. Um, or what do they call this formation in today's incarnation? 
Um, Cedar.net is a, a, a site that Vic Cedar and his wife Debbie um, have up and I usually use that when I'm interested in locating a caller. Um, and I've noticed that a lot of the newer callers that we have on here haven't gotten on there. You can get on that very easily just by going to cedar.net and somehow figure out how to do it. it he's got tons of information um, in a very basic way to look at it and find it, but it's all there. Um, and a lot of people use it to when they're trying to track down a caller, they will look there uh, first. So it's put your name in there because it's an entry that you can make. Singing call figures, original words to the original song. There's just a lot of stuff there. Um, Dosido.com, I haven't looked at lately. Is that still there? It's is there, but it's severely, um, there, there's not much there anymore. Okay. And one that not too many people know about, I think, but is squaredancehistory.org. Um, Jim Mayo and, oh, I can't remember the other guy's name. Um, he's mostly a counter dance caller, but the two of them have wor been working very hard and have all sorts of interesting stuff there. The thing that I've gone to it for and, and enjoy is they have recordings of many, many, many callers doing full dances. And some of the people you may have heard of but have passed away since, or some that are still alive, um, it's it just great to go back and listen to some of these guys. Some are video, some are just audio. Um, so there's an awful lot on, on squaredancehistory.org. Um, and Barry, I, I kind of, as they say, it'd be nice if you had a special link to what these other links are and describing what's, um, what's So your link. suggestion is that maybe I should have a links page like a lot of the websites yeah. do. With a, with a paragraph underneath is to, you know, these are typical things you might want to find there or, yeah. I don't know. Every, there... every one of those that you've listed is in the knowledge base. But and, uh, I, I, I'm aware that, especially for somebody that doesn't know their way around it, it can really seem like you're, they're buried and, and you can't really find them. Um, I am now... I think if you follow the uh, website tag in the, uh, in the knowledge base, you would, you would find all of them without having to scroll through too much stuff. I'm trying to figure out how to stop sharing now. Oh, right there where it says stop sharing. Okay. Um, Barry? Yo. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Don. No, I, I, that's it. Yeah. Um, I do most of the uh, initial editing and formatting for Behind the Mic uh, magazine or newsletter. If they're, one of the suggestions that we got was also making sure that we start putting all the authors in the table of contents, which we have been doing since 2017 18 as much as we can. If there's any issues that you have with that or things that we can do in our table of contents or article uh, format to make it easier for your resource sharing or your resource location, just let me know and we can see if we can incorporate that. Well, I will be in touch because it, it was a hell of a lot of work to put that uh, article together that had all those tables of contents. I had to go and scrape them by hand. had somebody tasked to do that on our website and they were to search all the articles by topic, by type, and by author. Uh, unfortunately, that's a three-year project that still hasn't even got started. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of kind of why my article looks the way it does, because the first time I talked to Barry about it, he said what you just said, and then I waited like a year. <laughs> and, We're still and, waiting. And I thought, well, I, I want to get something there that allows people to search for content that's in the newsletter with yeah. uh, on our site so uh, so anyway that's what we got now and but if there was some way to do it that wasn't a uh, total hand job the way it is uh, right now because I, I literally have to go to each magazine scrape the table of contents out of it I have to do a little reformatting on it to get it into the HTML form that I need and it's uh, it's very tedious <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you've got a suggestion to make it easier for you or to save the whole thing in a separate format without significantly changing it, I can arrange that to be done and then we can just send you the reformatted document. The, you know, it, it, it took a while for me to convince them to actually 
put the hyperlinks in the table of contents to each of the articles. And that, that was a big step forward. <laughs> so. Super. Well, I will, uh, I will I will send you a note. We, I won't take up people's time here. No worries. With this. Any other questions for Barry or any other suggestions? I thought you could save in HTML in some cases directly. The newsletter you're talking about? The table of contents even. You you can change, you, yeah. you could save the table of contents, but then that doesn't become searchable in the knowledge base. It won't search inside a PDF. Okay, but you can save it, export it from a PDF into a Word document. If anybody has an Adobe Acrobat Reader or some of these other apps where you can literally export it as a Word document. I actually tried that and uh, scraping the screen was faster. Yeah. <laughs> it took a lot of massaging to, to go through the steps of, you know, dumping it out of the PDF into a Word and then doing something with the word to try, you know, it was just more trouble than it was worth. It was, it was one of those cases where I just gave up trying to do it in a neat programmatic way and just bit the bullet and did it by hand. We, we can also send you the hey, data here. The, hey, I have a word document. The word document itself. Test it. Uh, Barry will, will send it to you because I get it both in PDF and Word behind the mic. Okay. But anyway, if you can if you can send me the Word document, that might help. Not a I'm not problem. Sure whether that happen. would be faster or not. I'll make it happen. Let let me think about it. Now, now that I know I have a contact where I might be able to uh, to get some help, I'll uh, I'll send you a note. Uh, look, time clock. <laughs> I do want to. I guess officially close this and then leave it open. I got another <laughs> question for you, Barry. But no problem. People disappear if they have other obligations. I want to really thank you, Barry, for for thank guiding you. us through this. Um, I've learned if, a bit. If I could just say say one more thing, um, I'm going to ask you to say lots more things. My but. my selfish uh, um, desire in all of this is to try and provoke people to send me stuff. <laughs> I want input, uh, whether that's content or input about, uh, you know, whether or not it was easy to find something or, you know, whether a category doesn't make sense to you, anything like that. I, you know, uh, it really is, um, it, it's, uh, it's all mostly out of my head and I've come to, you know, to the great fear, I guess, that maybe my head doesn't work the same as the rest of the world. <laughs> and people are finding it hard to work with it. Also, if you're looking for something and having trouble there and having troubles finding it, Barry has several links to contact him right on the web page, and he would love to see his six-year total doubled by <laughs> two contacts instead of one. Um, Barry, anyway, let me finish the thank yous, and then we'll continue if anybody wants to hang around. But. Um, Thank you for agreeing to do this and participating and and remembering. You said you weren't sure you would remember to come here. <laughs> and I didn't even <laughs> send you a reminder. Um, and Dan, as usual, thank you for the, the engineering behind this, the technical stuff. Um, and mm -hmm. to the other 31 minus 3, 28 people <laughs> that are attending, thanks for for, for joining us because it's it's always great to see your faces and hear your comments and get your feedback and also feedback on additional things you might be interested in having us discuss. <coughs> I've got a few things in mind for the next few sessions, but I haven't firmed them up yet. So Barry, a, a question. During the class session at noon here, two hours ago, um, three hours ago now, because we're at the end of this one. Somebody, I posted something in the chat room. Somebody sent me a question of how can I find that presentation? And I said, that would be a good thing to ask Barry if he can find it in the, in the, uh, in the knowledge base. 
Well, well it's it's there. I've got, <laughs> well, today's today's won't be up, but their their no, page no. where they have all the recordings is up in the knowledge base. No, I'm I'm aware of that. But during that, I posted in the chat room that many many years ago, Wade Driver did a great presentation on as as Tony was talking about. Um, Wade sort of changed the seed scene by having a lead instrument and a, and a chase instrument. And then the next time through, each of the seven times through, he'd have a different lead instrument and a different chase instrument. And many, many years ago, he did a presentation at Caller Lab that told about doing this. And I remember sitting in on it and being amazed that he was giving away his secrets as to why rhythm records were, were so good. Um, but he was sharing that at the time. And I put a note in the, in the, um, in the chat room and somebody specifically said, can I see that presentation he did? And I said, ask Barry. Now your <laughs> knowledge base has index of color lab and i'm sure it was pre-videos pre-audio things so that's obviously the place to look for to start looking for it um i don't know if that one was recorded uh, i'd like to listen to it again. I, I don't either but uh, do you want me to share the screen and, and we can look together um I, yeah i think that'd be a good exercise if, if uh as well, let me do that in the post minutes um, others are, if they're interested, go for it. And if they're not interested, go away. <laughs> See if you're, if you're Do you think it might've been 1983, Don? I have no idea. Cause I found one in 1983. Yeah. Who's it's on it besides, besides Wade? Um, Don yes. Williamson and yes. Dr. Carl Anderson. Huh. Um, and it's on music. It's a uh, definition of music, programming with music, recording techniques for music. I don't know. That'd be a good first place to look. <laughs> Is there's an audio recording of it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I it'd probably be worth listening to because those are good guys on there. What's uh, the I, actual let's go stage. I specifically okay. remember where he was talking about the, the lead instrument and the chase instrument and how he would sort of write it out on a board beforehand as to how he wanted to do it. And then he'd get the, the musicians to, to come through with it. And, um, it explained it, why rhythm at the time was, was such good music. It was much more interesting than a lot of the plain old boom chuck things. Um, so there's there's another one in 1984. Yep. Who's with there's him on that? Jerry Schatzer and Jack Berg. Wow, Jerry Schatzer, there's an old name. Yes, very sorry that he's not around these days. Jerry and I were pretty good friends. There's another one in 92 that might be it. Um, music by Design. That's a good possibility. That almost sounds actually. That was Tony and Wade and Daryl McMillan. Mm, interesting. That was an article that we done setting the mood. We can we can go and look and and uh, play it. Similar to what Tony was saying. Well, the presentation was recorded live for the International Association of Square Dance Callers 19th Annual Convention. We take you live to Virginia Beach, Virginia, where our session is just getting underway. Before that, I guess the best way to find it is go back to um, Tony's presentation that he did earlier today. And I think he mentioned what year wade sort of i think it was in the early 80s but just not sure exactly but maybe if, if it was in the early 80s it would be something that would help yeah. you which one of these we're talking about anyway that's how you could go about finding yeah. things that wade driver participated in that's great so for those who didn't see what i was doing 
I, I got to the page here and then I did a control F to get my browser search up on the page and I just searched on driver. That's what I did too. Yep. But I got video drivers and audio. No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll stop sharing now. Stop sharing your desktop, but still sharing your knowledge. <laughs> Any other questions for, for Barry or anyone else? But well, once again, Barry, thank you very much. Thank you for, do we have to pay you overtime oh. for the next 10 minutes? It, it's always a pleasure to talk about the knowledge base. <laughs> and uh, Barry, Barry yeah. do you send store, in your link to Barry. Yeah, do you store articles there or are they almost all links? Do you? I, um, I'd say the majority are links, but there are quite a few articles that, that are stored in the knowledge base itself, either because, um, well, there's a lot of them where I don't have access to the original article for whatever reason. Like there's some things that were published in uh, magazines or, or, um, or newsletters that aren't available outside anymore. And I managed to capture them before they went away. In fact, the two, the two items that I mentioned that I had to take down, they were both media articles that had disappeared. And the link checker noticed yeah. that the link no longer pointed to anything. So. Yeah. Oh. I yeah. did a search for CSDS because I was hoping to find your write-up on CSDS. <laughs> and it's not in there. Really? <laughs> uh-huh. So is that a request for content, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> It's just a wondering how you decide what goes in there. <laughs> well, you don't have all of your stuff there. It's it's very haphazard is what it is. And Chris, I, I heard there's a link on the Color Lab page that you could actually put suggestions like that in that Barry will look at. Oh yeah, no, I know. I have some other ones too, but I just thought I'd uh, mention that particular one. Um, Barry, it's relative to something we were talking about on the phone the other day, when and you did a, a demonstration of searching Don Beck on the database and you came up with a bunch of things I was in, you only had the video um, of my introduction to mental image calling, you only had the version show up on screen of the caller coach thing. You didn't have my YouTube presentation on it. No, it was there. Um... Because there was there was one article there was one article that had both the caller coach thing and the longer longer form one referenced okay. in the same article. Well, I know when you and I looked at it, we we were able to find it again. But I told you I wasn't able to find it once. And when you were scrolling through in the demo here, I didn't see it listed either. I thought I saw it. You want me to share the screen? We'll look again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, personally, I'm curious. <laughs> All righty then. This would be good. We don't. Oh, we had hits. Introduction to mental image, image choreography. I think that's the one that's got them both. Yeah. Oh, so okay. Under introduction to mental image, image choreography, there's the video file to the two hour video. Okay. okay. And there's another video file for the uh, one that you did for the coaches. Okay, good. And by the way, I haven't, when I, when people look at the video, they need the handout and I haven't quite figured out how to give them the handout. So I've just linked. The handouts your, are there too. I know. I've just linked to your, your knowledge base place and sent them there to get the handout. So thank you for having it. <laughs> <laughs> so I will unshare again. Any other, any other? Are you going to be linking all of these COVID-19 class presentations, all done stuff and everything else onto that? 
I think that's all in there. It's all in there. So if you, I think if you search on Corona or class, you'll, you'll get it. And the, the presentation for Cape here, they'll all be in there as well, are they? Yep. That's good. You know where to send people in. I'm no. just wondering, is the, well, has there been any, uh, well, uh, presentations or making knowledge base known? Because uh, at least here in Germany, I suspect that most uh, callers never have heard about uh, that or even about the teaching uh, caller lab and things that they go to caller lab org and uh, find the uh, uh, definitions and things like that. But I think they never really search for it. So uh, uh, isn't it a point to make it more known? At least I will try to, to uh, contact our ECTA uh, guys and, and uh, maybe they should shoot an article in the ECTA notes or something like that so that it's more well known uh, to callers. Gerhard, I, I've, I've written lots of uh, articles that appear in Direction and American Square Dance and, and Zip Coder and uh, any place that I can find that's willing to accept a, a description of the knowledge base. So if you can um, find me uh, a way to get it into, into ECTA's newsletter, for instance, that'd be great. Gerhard, I, I try. Gerhard, I think that is a, a common problem that people don't know about it. And that's one of the reasons to present here. Um, spread the word a little bit further. This is the first I've heard of it, and I live here in the United States, so it's not just overseas that ain't hearing it. There's some of us out here that haven't heard of it either. All I've ever known is callerlab.org. Yeah, well, I've done lots of presentations within Caller Lab to the point where they're sick of it, but it's really hard. It's really hard to get <laughs> outside that. You know, send, I, send me a blurb on that, Barry. And if you can, I'll get it into BTM as well. Uh, okay, um, like I've, it, I've got several articles about it, so I can I can ship them all to you, and you can decide which ones work or they, none of them work. I can write something new. The the other thing I would like to suggest um, there's a few callers around and a few people that go to various caller school every year. I mentioned Caller Lab, the knowledge database, and and accessing it. Um, I only found out I was. Previously, it used to be members' access to the knowledge database, or every time I used to go in, because I used to go into callerlab.org, to access the knowledge database, it would go to my member login page. And that was on, on the website, which is why I thought it was a members-only page. I didn't know you could just type it in and, and go right to it. Huh. Um, that said, I make sure that that's part of every workshop or every teaching thing I do to go to that, and if you're not a member to join, of course, but... Um, to go to that web page. And I think if everybody here is attending schools, make that suggestion to the people that are presenting to, you know, even if it's only a 15 minute quick synopsis of what it is and where it is, make that part of the curriculum and part of the written notes. There's a thought. Thank you. Oh, by the way, thanks for the product placement too. <laughs> hey, Don can't be the only one promoting his wares. <laughs> uh, Barry, maybe you could send something to Ken Rattucci to have him put it in his uh, book that he passes out. Oh, he does. Um, at least I think he does. If only because I've presented it there before. Uh, <laughs> but, but that's probably only the schools that I've taught at. So, uh, but I think it's part of his... No, well, maybe not. I'd have to look to see whether it, because he's got a syllabus that he's built up over time with uh, right, stuff from that. all kinds of, of coaches who have worked for him at his, at his school. And, uh, I've worked for him several know. times, so I'm pretty sure it's in there. It's usually in his links and notes. I was talking to him uh, earlier today and last night about getting his school perhaps started here on an annual basis. So. And when I talk to him again, I'll mention it to him as well. Well, with that, I am going to bow out, guys. Once again, thanks for 
presenters, engineers, participants. <laughs> See you next week, if not before. We should have something interesting going by then. Take care, guys. Take care. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Bye, Don. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Guys, I'm leaving also. Um, Bye. Good meeting. How long has this project actually taken out of your life there, Barry? Oh, yep, Barry's gone. <laughs> and Barry has left us. I, I think he's now 25 and he had a full head of hair when he started this. <laughs> you taking off too, Chris? Yep. It seems pretty much like everybody is. Uh, let me see. We'll hear from you again in about four more hours. Is that right, Mel? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing a just an overview of programming because it's. I got asked that question about five or six times because people are talking about programming, how to program a tip, or programming music, how that's programmed. But what about programming in general? How do you structure a program? So I put that together in a broad overview that can be applied to all levels of programming and uh in dances as well as uh, individual tips it'll or? take you through programming a call to programming a tip to programming an evening to programming a session an event an entire dance season the the, the structure of programming and the technique is the same for each it's just the application that changes but unfortunately, people don't lose, don't use the technique and just try and focus on, on the one thing. So if they want to program, for instance, I want to program spin the top, it's well beyond just saying, right, I'm going to use spin the top in my pattern call. I'm going to use this top figure in my singing call. Great, I programmed that well, and I'm going to do this on my third tip because that's my workshop tip. Programming doesn't work that way. It's got to be part of, from small, but it's got to be part of especially if you're, you're doing class teaching concessions. And the same thing applies to special events with multiple callers, um, programming for if you're a programmer for an event like a convention and you're not a caller, which happens an awful lot, it's taking the techniques and tips going down through there and saying, right, you know, you've got to be objective and not worry about callers to where you go because it's not about them it's about the dancers and success and the only way it's going to you know like it's that kind of stuff and as usual i'm probably not going to be politically correct on a lot of things but uh hey if i wouldn't know. tune in if you were gonna be <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I people somebody commented they says one of the reasons i like yours is because you don't pull punches when you say something do you? <laughs> Says, no, I if if I say what I mean and I mean what I say, and, and you know, granted, I may not always be right. But if I think I'm right, I'll defend the position. And if you think I'm wrong, I'll ask you to prove me wrong. And that's what makes discussions. I don't have animosity. I've got into some terrific arguments with um, Barry, with Alan, with Tony, with 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 Ken on different ideas and different approaches. Sometimes we agree, sometimes they change their mind. Most of the time I end up changing my mind because it's much better if it's an I, I ever will be. Um, but that's the whole point. And they're all still good friends. You can't be professionally objective and courteous about it. You know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, look at Dan and say, you know, Dan, I, I totally disagree with what you're saying on that singing call. Like that, 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 that doesn't mean I'm going to be Dan's lifelong enemy from now on just means we have a difference of opinion but the big thing is we're talking about square dancing we're talking about format and we may have to bring in a, a third caller to get our 17th opinion on the same topic because yeah. that's what callers are two callers live opinions all different from the same topic. i got a question about the caller lab site yes uh I was on there updating my info and stuff, and I was browsing through it. It was a regular caller lab site. Yes, callerlab.org. And I go to the 
uh, the bar where you can scroll down on the side. And oh, what did it say? Member member files only. Okay, so when you, when you go to the Caller Lab website, uh huh, which is www.callerlab.org. Yep. The new layout says for callers, for the public, and then your online store. Okay, so I'm, go, in, I'm in the four callers. Yeah, if you go, yeah, to the four callers on the left hand side, you should have a link to all the resources. Uh huh. Okay, and then there's membership info. Membership, okay. and there's members only files. Is that the part you're talking about? Yep, when I click on members only, and I am logged in. It comes up and says you do not, do not have access to view this page within the website. Okay, that's that's part of the login issue. Um, I have the same issue because I can't remember my logon name or what I used to log on as. Um, well, I am logged in. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can find out what's going on here. Uh, God. All right, let's try this. You don't have access to view the page within this website. Okay, that's that's a problem with the website. I can see what you're talking about now. Okay. So it's, it's not just me. No. So what, what you'll, where the hell's the Zoom thing gone? I've lost everybody. Oh, we can still see you. Uh, ever since I upgraded to those Windows 10 or Windows 379 or whatever the hell it is these days. Uh, keeps disappearing off the screen. Much as I hate it, I, I used to like the old back fashioned web uh, home page where you just click on what you wanted instead of all these fancy flash icons that you have to go through. I have to set the new one so that I got the old fashioned web page up on my screen so I know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, yeah, just send a, an email um, to Caller Lab. And that'd be, um, I think it's info at Caller Lab. And just tell them that you're having issues. Dana should get on to you and, and let you know what's going on with it. Carol, are you still here? Carol? Yes, I am. Okay, you've got an issue with Taminations, is that correct? Yeah, all I was doing is Tamination Sequencer was from a squared set saying head square through four. Why is it a square through? Why isn't it being accepted? Okay, Are you typing head square through or head square through four? I did head square through. Okay. Right, it's working on mine. Are you able to share your screen? Okay, I will share my screen. Watch it work now. Okay, where's my Zoom window? Let me get rid of this other stuff for now. Um, okay, where is it? Share screen. Here I am. Uh, wrong one. This one. Okay, what are you seeing? I'm seeing your... Okay. I'm seeing Dan's picture. And All right. I, I don't see your screen. Does anybody else see her screen? No. No. Uh, I forgot to say share. 
That helps. <laughs> okay, so make which one? I just go up to the top right hand corner and make the so it's full screen. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to do too, too many things at one time. Okay. All right. Um, hold on a second. Gotta get my mouse. Here we are. That's as big as I can make it. Okay. Now. Um, now I am doing it inside Square Desk. Okay. So it could be I've got something wrong here, but. Okay. Click. No, no, don't, don't, don't click there. Click in the little white space between your tab, where you're typing and your figures on the screen. Just right click that. Where? Left. Right, 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 right. Move your no left. Back. There, right click. And where am I? Right click where? No, no, no. Put your cursor right back where it was in that dead spot. This now, space. Right, right there. Right click your mouse. Nothing. Nothing's okay. coming. Okay. Then that's an issue between the link with your terminations and where. Um, just, just okay, close, close your square desk down for a second. I am and just open up terminations in a web page. Uh, that's what I'm going to do next. Actually, no. Thought I closed it. All right. Do I have it in there twice? Okay, here we go. Now we can all see what you got in your desktop. <gasps> oh, that's dangerous. Okay, just open up a web page for terminations. Um, That'll do a termination sequencer. This one right here. Next so, one up. Search. Okay. 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 Now right click in the dead space. Nothing. Please. I don't have to full head square through here. No, that's not working either. It's a, it's an old version of it, I think. It is an old version. But this is, I'm running it right off the website. Now that wasn't the website. So it was showing so you two. are running it off the website. Okay, yeah, can you see the chat window? Yes. Click on that link. Well, it doesn't work as a link, but I will copy it. Okay. <laughs> okay, but bring your screen back up so I can see what's going on there, if you would. She may have to clear her uh, browser because it may be retaining it there. Uh, that's why I put a whole new link into it. Yeah, Jerry, but uh, okay. Have you gone to screen? I'm still sharing. Are you? No, you're not. No, you're not. I've you're got not. your smiling face. I'm not? No. Nope. Uh, where's my button to sh The bottom in the middle. Um, okay, hold on. I am sh Oh. Your screen. Um, I guess this is screen two. I don't know why it's considered screen two. There you go. Okay. I don't know why it stopped sharing. I'll enlarge that. Full screen. Okay. Now, in that gray area just to the left underneath where you type, put your mouse in there and right click. Okay. Refresh or reload. Okay, type head square through. Um, well, I'm already there, right? Yeah, or hit play if you want, whichever you want to do. But so, what's the website supposed to be? Okay. It this, is, without this call what, thing? What version uh, or what web browser are you using? Windows Explorer? Chrome. Chrome? Okay, it should work in Chrome. Right there, Chrome. Yeah. You see my screen, right? Chrome. Okay, so that, that's obviously a disconnect in there. You, go, you will need to clear out your cache. So if you do that in- It did 
did say 2017. Yeah. So let me stop my screen. It's always going, but what you need to do, you need to periodically, instead, of, how to do instead that. of saving a link, um, and because what your computer will do, it'll go to the link that you have saved on that if, it, if it's a common history thing, if you're using an old version. So clear out your cache for what that is or delete I'm it out of your history. I remember how to do that. Yeah, in your favorites, just delete it out of your favorites or just clear out your temporary uh, memory. You can do that in your settings on Microsoft mm -hmm. when you sign into your web page or into your um, mm -hmm. Microsoft account. And then go to the just then your normal search contaminations. If you just use the word contaminations as a search, click on it because don't don't go contamination sequencer, just contaminations. It'll bring you up to cam twirlers and sequencer is all part of the same thing. Right. If you look at the layout now, on, oh, are you showing me something? No, I'll share mine now. Just a second. If, I am uh, in Chrome trying to figure out how to clear clear mm -hmm. browsing data. Okay, can you, can you see my screen? Um, hold on a second. I'm sorry, I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, I got two windows open. Yes, yeah, so I'm minimizing this. Okay, I see your. Yes. Okay. So on the version you had. Uh, as Michael was saying, you have an older version. You did not have these four buttons underneath on the version you had in your square desk. Um, I don't know, did I? No, you didn't. Like, for instance, you couldn't do this. Now, how can I clear? Oh, it's got to be under advanced. I don't want to clear everything. No, you don't. You, oh. Is it just clear the uh, the favorite on that uh, and replace it with this the bookmark and replace it with the current bookmark. Okay. All right. Yeah. I didn't. One of, one of the biggest mistakes people do is they use their browsing history as I'm going to go back to this website over and over and over again, so they can just type in their search screen and say right. I'm going to type Yolanda Van Dyke or just Yolanda every time I want to go to Yolanda's web page. So I type Yolanda and it comes up with her web page. Okay. Well, she, she makes changes to, to that. It's not going to go to the same location. Gotcha. Because I've done that. If, if, you, if you have a place that you want to go back to over and over and over again, save it as a bookmark in your favorites. That way you can go back to that page. If they make updates to what you're typing in, it's just going to go to Yolanda. And because it's a recurrent history, your computer is going to do some of that um, collation thinking for you and take you to where it thinks you want to go. And um, your Square Desk, in Square Desk is the version that you had loaded in Square Desk, which is why you're opening it up. So now your computer is actually looking at that's the one I always go to. That's the link she goes to. So when you type contamination, it's going to go to that link as your first choice. Your other option is to do the actual search, search it, pull up the whole list, scroll through them to find the one you want. But it's a lot faster just to make a bookmark. And when things change or it stops looking, then you go back and search for the updated web page and change your bookmark. I'm going to see if Square Desk is now linked to the right one. Is it? I'm going to look. Oh. Oh, shoot. So you do not have JavaScript enabled. JavaScript is needed. You need to turn on JavaScript in your browser. Yeah, I don't use Square Desk, so I, I'm not really familiar with it. Yeah, but that's under the Taminations that it's telling me this. This is under the link for Taminations. Hold on, let me just go to the sequencer. Yeah, it's an old one. This, um, I'll have to figure it out. I think Dan got, didn't, didn't Dan get me set up? I don't know. I don't know if Dan's still with us. I think he may have absented himself. Sorry. Um, what I would do is contact your help desk for Square Desk. 
and ask them because I don't know the program well enough. Uh, if there is a link to an internal program, what you're doing is you're creating almost an intranet on the internet. Yeah, I, I can't remember how I did it. Yeah, so that one I can't really help oh, you with. Oh, I know, remember. I think I can remember how I did it. I just have to go looking. Um, let's see. This has just been a long time, like two weeks. <laughs> I'm just, oh my goodness. Oh, I'm looking in the wrong place. I was looking under SD, not square desk. Okay. Well, all right. Come on, where's open file location? Um, I have to figure it out. Nope, that's not it. We'll figure it out. I noticed that, um, what's his name? Um, Barry was using um, LibreOffice. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. It's just a, a different type of program. No, it's a free free version of Office. If they last thousands of dollars for Microsoft, you can buy. You know. But what are you doing? You doing some choreography? Okay. I like um, this. Yeah. Now, why do you have them colored the way you do? I mean, I mean, why do I have the whites as couple number one? No, so why do you have gray? Why do you have two and three black? You just chose to put it that way? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I was just wondering what your logic, personal logic was for to color two and three black, because you're not going to pay attention to them. Right? No, I, I just put them there because I figured nobody's asking questions. So I didn't know what you wanted to do. Somebody said they wanted to look at combination and resolution. So I figured I'd. Oh, okay. Out there. I, was actually, I was actually looking back at a document tan Tim Mariner put together about uh, chicken plucker. And I wanted to put the choreography in that he had for chicken plucker because he had like multiple versions. Yeah, well, we'll look at that one. Basic, and he had 101, 201, master's degree. I'm like, oh my. He's Absolutely. got all versions. So, anyway. Yeah. So, when we were talking resolution, the biggest thing that people say, oh, resolution technique. Here's the first question What is this formation? Diamonds. Is it a diamond? Because if you point look at the point boys, diamonds. Yeah, but is it? Look at the girls. The girls are in facing part of diamonds. The boys are in standard diamonds. Oh. So is it even a diamond? Um, well, it is some kind of diamond. Uh, that's a good is, question. Is it a squeezed hourglass? Uh, is it an inverted diamond? Is it a sunken galaxy? Are you going to tell us? Yep. But I, gave you, so. <laughs> I gave you the answer last week. The answer is who cares? <laughs> It does not matter what this formation is because there's virtually nothing you're going to do in this formation and there's nothing you're going to set up in this formation. And there are hundreds of thousands of these things which are transient little things. It's not a box, it's not a line, it's not a standard diamond, it's not a facing diamond, it's not a circle. It's one of these transient places that dancers get into that when you look at it in stop time, you wonder, what the hell did I just do? So. Well, I what, guess if you did a diamond circulate. 
you can't do it. Well, if I did a diamond circulate from there, I'm going to get the side man and the head lady or the yellow man and the white lady to occupy the same part of a diamond. Make it flash. That's right. So I can't do a diamond circulate from there. Uh, so um, I'm not worried about what to do. And you'll notice I didn't use any plus. In fact, I didn't even use any symmetric. Name. That's all basic choreography. What about um hang on hang on before I'm not looking, I'm not looking for I'm not looking for a resolution. The idea of what I'm talking about is you can see your key couple. In this case, it's the number one couple, the white couple. The idea is to symmetrically move the dancers and pair them up and then get them to a normal standard relationship. Boy on the left, girl on the right. So that's that's all we want to do. And we do that with symmetrical choreography. So what do we want to do here? We've got to normalize this and bring it into some kind of semblance of reality. Well, I would say it's some kind of diamond circulate and then an extend of one of the, a couple well, of the couples. If, if I'm behind the mic now. And if you say, okay, dancers, do some kind of a diamond circulate. What's going to happen to your floor? Break down. That's right. Mm -hmm. So give me I'm something. Sure that you DVD or you know that if you, you're going to crash. And... What, what can the dancers do? Go home. <laughs> yeah, we want to get this to some, some semblance of normal. Well, we've got ocean wave or mini waves in the middle. What do we want to do with those mini waves? Guys, trading isn't doing anything. No. Don't worry about what calls came before. I think Before you can you make a sausage, can't you? Sorry? I think you can make a sausage. Who is that? Keith. Oh, hi, Keith. It's coming up as Dan highlighted when you're speaking. Okay, I'm going to put that on speaker view so I can actually see there. Can you can you see, still see my screen share? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. I can pretend that I'm Dan and get him in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can do all sorts of things such as very centers. Um, uh, that's what I call sausage. Okay. Okay. Now, from there, okay, I've got all sorts of different things that I can do. Outside void space end. And you notice that that boy way up at the top end didn't face in. Weird formations, aren't they? He already was faced in. You now this this boy up here. Yeah, why didn't he? Yeah, because the dancers intuitively don't know what the hell I want them to do. That's that's my theory. I'm I'm thinking that Taminations is built into the program. When you call something weird, the dancers don't know what to do. So some may do it and some won't do it. That tells me that you probably shouldn't be doing that call. Okay. So if we get if we get back here, you know, what can we do from here? I was thinking about cat the diamond. Oh, well, that's an interesting thing. It is. Now, have a look at that formation. I wasn't going to use plus, but that's fine. I cut the diamond as plus. What he did there is the very first part that is needed for resolving. I don't care where the dancers are, but I do have my number one couple, the white couple, paired up, don't I? 
Can you, can you see him down here? Yeah. Okay. So if I look at that, I've got a line facing this way in the center, a line facing that way. Okay. Let's get rid of these people in the, in the center. Okay. So let's just have the center for wheel and deal. Oh, wait a minute. That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? What can I call from there? Extend. Okay, now remember, I want, I want to keep these white dancers paired up. So I don't want to get them separated. The center, somebody's going to run. Yeah, you can do a center's run. But we've just done a slide together. We've done a wheel and deal. Who do you want to run? You can have the centers recycle also. Yep, that'll do. Anything that's going to normalize them and keep them paired. And from here, oh, God, resolution is so easy, isn't it? Alaman left, right and left grand. Or any of those, look, I'm facing. Centers pass through. Right and left grand. There's a myriad of different things. The whole point of this exercise is it doesn't really matter. This is where you've got a resolution technique of pair and all these, these basic line resolution techniques. But see the white dancers? That's what you want to focus on. So I'm going to mix the square up. Uh, touch. I'm sorry, but I am going to have to bug out. No worries. I said, all, all we're doing here is just playing on what I was asked about. Okay, so this is about as mixed up as you're possibly going to get. Okay. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to pair up your key couple. Get them together and get them normal. And there's three movements that are the most important movements to successful dancing and square dancing. One is circulate, one is trade, and one is run. If, if your dancers at any level can do those movements properly, you can pretty much sort a square out from anywhere. If they cannot do those three movements properly, like they cheat on them, they take shortcuts, you are always going to have problems with your dancers being out of position as you advance into different movements. So that's what you want to really use for pairing. Normalize a formation into something that you know. So if I have the... Now, I'm sorry, just to interrupt. I, I, I didn't catch the first one. The second one was circulate and run. What was the first one? Trade. Trade. Thank you. Those are the three most important movements in square dancing. Okay. Um. There we go. Okay, so don't worry about how I got there. 
we have now a very convoluted and a very mixed up square, don't we? Yep. Okay. So the technique is exactly the same for anything. What's this formation? Who cares? Who cares? We don't care what this formation is. It's not important. We're not using it as a template. We're not using it as a fixed point. We're not using it as a reference. We just happened to get here because we called something insanely stupid. And, you know, as a square dance caller, if we never call something insanely stupid in our life, we're not a square dance caller. Because every single caller will call something insanely stupid at one time in their career. If you don't, you're not trying. So we got here. Dancers do too. Sorry? It's also what the dancers do. That's right. So we want to fix this. And the way to fix this is first to normalize, is to get it to some place that we can recognize what's going on. Okay. So how are we going to do that? Don't look for a specific movement. If you have to tell dancers to do something individually, do that. The reason I blacked out all of the other dancers other than the key couple is because I don't want to say, well, the head boys do this, the side boys do that, the, the, these girls do this. You've got girls, you've got boys. So first, let's ignore the colors. Get to something normal. Michael, you're smiling. You may as well start us off here. Uh, Michael, Michael is, from Sweden. I, I normalize it. Well, Michael. Sorry, the other Michael. Oh, okay. You're gonna okay. Have to... um, I was thinking about out facers, you turn back. Okay. So that, out facers. Helps if I put the cursor in there. Um, maybe call them, maybe call them leaders. There you go. So, um, And I would like to do a uh, very two center girls touch one quarter. Hmm. And my next thought uh, is if you can extend, maybe. So you want those two girls to extend? Yes. That would be. There you go. That's what you wanted. So now I only have one boy I need to fix in some way. And now, did you see what I, I had to go through a number of different iterations 
to actually get the dancers to do what I wanted them to do. Okay, that's a nuance of the program, but that is very reflective of what it's like when you're actually calling. You saying those same girls extend, absolutely, that would have worked. The dancers would have done that. But what happened there is the program doesn't like that. Pretend the program is your dancer. So you want to find a simple way that they can do what you want them to do. So now what? Hmm. Should we jump in here? You want some help, Michael? Yes. Go ahead, Keith. End boys face left. Okay. Uh, have we got have we got a recognizable formation? Parallel ocean waves? I think so. So now we'll give you this back. The next step to do is pair up your key couple, which is your white. So pair those up. Michael? Okay, yes. I would like to do centers circulate twice. Okay, and now we want to get them to be a normal couple. Yes. Normal meaning boy on the left, girl on the right. Yes. So half sachet. Okay. Now, how far are we to resolution? Well, I think we have a uh, couple number four is half a shay and couple um, one is a normal couple, but I think um, they are in, uh, it should be in sequence at least. Yes, they are. So, how many of you have faced this kind of a dilemma when you've got one couple half sashayed, one couple not? Okay. There's a movement which is great. When you have that, there's actually two things, and these, these are little tricks. The first one is, uh, let's just do, I'm just going to do this to make it easy for you, but uh, bend the line. Easy for us, hard for you. Okay, and watch. Square through three, one, two, three, swing your partner. Okay, that's one, but if you do that a lot, people are going to recognize it. The that other was, one yeah. is. Tag the line face in. When you have one couple half sashayed and one couple not, tag the line face in will 99% of the time sort that out for you. Okay, and from here, the same, same kind of thing. Instead of bend the line square through three, tag the line face in, pass through. Swing your partner. You see how that works? Resolution, when we, when we look at resolution, a lot of the time there's a resolution technique that will get you out of trouble pretty much anywhere. Um, let's reset this. So if we do side past the ocean,
and we'll keep that. What the hell? Okay. So, what kind of formation is this? Answer? Who cares? <laughs> it's a T-ball. Okay, there we go. But you don't you don't have to worry about it because we're not going to worry about that. It's a transient formation. We want to get this to somewhere normal. Who wants to have a crack at this? Rich? You're doing a Kilroy on me again, Rich. I can only see you top of your glasses and your forehead. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Normalize the formation first. Get it to something that we can recognize. A box, a line, a wave, anything that's normal. Uh, uh, girls run, or no, center girl run. The center girls are with the girls. Yeah, they're with the girls. Um, center, center girls face in. I'm in a relatively normal position. I want to make pairings, boy-girl pairings. Uh, centers pass through. Yep. Uh, step to a wave. Okay, I'm in a normal, relatively normal formation. Okay, I need to pair up my key couple. Oh my God, how easy does it get? Okay, I want to get them into a normal couple. Boy on the left, girl on the right. How easy does this get? Boys run. Or, or girls turn back. Okay, and I'm in lines facing out. Let's put my number four couple back where I can see it. Okay, so the idea here is you keep the white couple together. What do I want to do from here? Uh, let's see. Um, oh, what do I do? Wheel and deal. We're through three. Perfect. That's it. And there, and how? Helm and left. Yep. Uh, I mean, realistically speaking, how easy does it get? If you know your key couple and your secondary couple, so couples one and four, matching that key couple and keeping them together is 99% of the result. Let's try this one. next I think this is Michael is next Michael from New York formation who cares exactly okay let's get to something that we can know a line a wave a box two-faced line anything that works voice clover I gotta stop and think of what the sequencer can do so Oh, that's not what would have normally happened, but you're there, so go for it. Yeah, because uh, actually I wanted two things to happen at the same time. 
Because what I wanted was the girls to cut the diamond. Which they can't do now. Oh, they can? Okay. Oh, good C good C three form C three A formations. Uh, and it didn't do the way I wanted it to do, but that's combinations for you. Uh, boys, uh, no, that one. Yeah, boys, t touch quarter. Hang on, I'm, I'm trying to get you back here. Yeah, okay. Okay. See, that's that's where it's throwing it off. Okay, I'll, I'm not going to do that to you because that's not, um, that's the program. So let's, yeah, do it, let's do it this way first. That's what you wanted. Right, yeah. Girls recycle. Via left. I should have said that earlier. Bend the line. Girls, bend the line. And just out of out of curiosity. You put them right back where they started from. Okay. What did you want to do from there? From here, uh, this is where you were, and you call girls recycle beer left bend the line, right? To get okay. in there, okay. Ex extend, okay. Mm -hmm. it, that recycle that you had to get them into this situation, just yeah. add that sweep a quarter more. Don't don't try and force them around in circles like that. Okay. Touch a quarter. Boys run. Okay. Now, normally, what this this is where I would stop you and say, "Look, do we have a normal, recognizable formation that we can yes. work with with circulates, trades, or runs?" Yes. Now I want to look at my white couple. Okay. Do you still want to do a boys run? Uh, no, uh, okay. Perfectly good call. I know. Yeah, boys run. Yep. I'll do that. Now match and up your circulate. feet. Couple. And, circ and circulate. Okay, have you got your key couple matched up? Yep. Have you got them in a relatively normal boy-girl formation? Yes. Okay, let's try and resolve this. Oh, that was so hard, wasn't it? Yeah. Wheel and deal. Um, pass through. Trade by. Uh, would have done something differently, but I got limited limited to what the uh, terminations can do. Touch a quarter. Let me give it to straight. Yeah, you you can do all sorts of different things to resolve from here. Yeah. You can do veer left partner trade and promenade. You can do yeah, yeah. Okay, do that veer left. You know, partner there's, trade and there's promenade. There's a lot of things. What my yeah. point is, you you're able to resolve from here. Right. Mm -hmm. My trouble is, I do a lot of you know challenge calling, so I got to slow it down a little bit. You know, 
You can do there a thousand different get outs from there. You could have done a bend the line pass through and swing your partner. You could have done a bend the line slide through pass through Alaman left. It's a standard line out of sequence. So, um, Oh. Hmm. It's not going to let me do something weird. <laughs> yeah, because we're getting to, yeah. Okay, so we're going we're going to mix the square up. Who's next? Yolanda's next. <laughs> Okay. Now. <laughs> um. I don't know if Tamination did that properly, but you notice I was switching the, the key couple between one group and then I change it to another group and then I change it to another group. That is just to represent the dancers are dancing. You don't know where the key couple is. You really don't care where the key, key couple is. You're watching the dancers to make sure that they can actually dance, but you know who they are. But do is I want to get this to a normal formation, a box, a line, a wave, a square, whatever. So let's normalize this first. Okay, so center girls, you turn back. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Um, and, and girls, you turn back. Can I just make one observation? Yeah. Okay. That would do that half sachet, one couple and a half, or standard, the next couple. Your couples are half sachet. So you want to try and keep that kind of a relationship semi-normal. Okay. Okay. So you, so you could have the outside girls run. That way everybody's half sachet, depending on what you want. So the reason I'm asking that, what is your next call going to be after you have the end girls you turn back? What's your next call? I was just trying to get them both in box and this, this, this is where you have to think about it. Now, you've been working the centers. What were you going to do with those center four dancers next? Um, 
you had the girls turn back. What what did you want to do with those center four? Actually, I wasn't thinking that far ahead yet. I was just trying to get them into boxes. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand it. Just, you, you've got the skills to, to actually see two or three movements ahead now. You may not believe me when I tell you that, but you do. But if you were going to have those center girls turn back, okay, if they were going to do a star through, then yes, the outside girl turned back. If they were going to do a pass the ocean, you might have the outside girl run so that they're all half sachet. These are the kinds of things you have to think ahead on. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep, there was nothing wrong with what you said. I just want you to start thinking of options there and thinking one or two moves ahead. I haven't thought about more than one step ahead. Okay, so that's what you called. Now, what else do you want? Wait, just let me write this down, please. Okay, so, because um, I, I thought, okay, well, then I have the outside normal. Um, yeah. So, um, half sachet dancers facing the same sex or an opposite sex. What is the easiest way to make a standard couple when you have opposite sex dancers facing? The boy is facing a girl and you want them to be a normal couple. What do you call? Um, California twirl? No, the boy is facing a girl. Oh, gee, don't hint. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. True. I, 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 didn't, I didn't hear what the other person said, so. Okay. Okay. Have I got something I can recognize? Yes. I've got an eight chain form or parallel yeah. boxes. So. Yeah. I, I want to pair up my key couple. Hmm, they're so far apart. This is going to be hard. I've got a boy facing a girl. And they just uh, start through again? Yep, or a slide through or a start through, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I've got them paired. I've got the normal. Doesn't matter what I do. Now I want to resolve the square. I want to keep those whites together. Um. What do you normally call from facing lines? What do you normally call? Forward and back while I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> no. I'll give you a forward and back. You got eight beats of music. Forward, one, two, three, touch, back, two, three, touch. Next call. Um, right and left through. Okay. Next call. Can't think of get get them moving. Do something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um Come on, the dancers are dancing for you here. I know. You're, you're going quicker than I can figure it out. Um, <laughs> when you have when you have your key paired in lines, pass through, get them to a place where after a wheel and deal, your paired couple will be on the outside. Your square is resolved. Pass through wheel and deal. You have to if the man is looking at his corner, it's a pass through. Passive lady. If it's not, it's a square boy. So do you understand what I mean by that? No. 
<laughs> if 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 your paired couple is on the outside, can you see my my mouse? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If he can see his corner, it's a pastor, a passive lady. Okay. If he cannot, the square boy, square through three. That's just something to remember it by. Okay. But that will work 99.9999999% of the time to resolve. Pairing up a key couple, or sorry, getting him normalized, getting to a formation where you can recognize what it is, you circulate some trades to pair up your key couple and get them on the outside. And from there, you've, you've almost got the square result. And here, here's a secret to square dancing. If you pair up one couple, just one couple, your square is 50% resolved. You understand what I mean by that? Yes, because it, you own, because you already because you only have to have okay. two because they're mirrored, right? So the other ones are going to be the same. Right. So if I pair up this head couple, I know that that other head couple is paired. And the same goes if I pair up a side couple, the other side couple is paired. So half the square is resolved. Whether or not they're in sequence or not, I don't care. If I pair up a key couple and I don't have the other one paired, uh, okay, so I paired up a key couple, let's have the size. Okay, I've danced them around, they're playing, they're moving. I now have the square 50% resolved. Doesn't matter. If I want to do this, I now have my key couple paired, so it's 75% resolved, and I've got the corner lady there in that same group. That's three quarters resolved. I only have to resolve one man. Where is that side man by doing it that way? And you notice when all of you are doing that, you resolve the square by pairing up the key couple and getting them to where you wanted it to be. You already done 75% of your resolution. After that, pass through wheel and deal, and it's either centers square through or centers pass through, and you've got your element left. Those will get more complex as you go. Did you want to take a crack at this, Cece? Yeah. Always in the background here. Yeah, I, I turned the water off, sorry. Yeah, I'll take a crack. Okay, so let's do a... That's one quarter. That's trade. Hinge. Okay. Okay, so I have a look at that for a second. I just got to look and find. Oops. Find one document here. Oh. Why is it always easier when you're looking at it for somebody else? <laughs> okay. So, um, all the girls face in. All the girls face in? Yes. Which way is in? Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what I 
was was hoping for. Um, okay. Center dancers star through. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Touch a quarter. Sorry. And then, um, let's see. Um, out facing boys, you turn back. Now, who's out facing there? Just out of curiosity. The two on the outside, um, Are these not guys attached to the boys. Um, oh, I don't know. Hmm. No, because they're facing another dancer. They're not out facing, right? They're facing, they're in the middle facing other dancers. Okay. Um, no, no, they are actually facing answer they're facing right out of the space so they are actually out facers so that's i'm only saying uh, the dancers probably i'd say 80 percent of your floor would understand when you said center boys okay. you have two so if you say outside boy okay i've got an outside i've got an inside i've got an outside I've yeah got a Out, outside boys okay yep. you turn back that's okay um let's see extend centers extend well, everybody would extend okay but. No, that's good now, have I got a normal figure, a normal no. formation? No. Yes, I've got an ocean wave. Well, yeah. Okay, so now I want to but look at my key couple. Not, I want not every boy has a girl on the right. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's, yeah. a standard, it's a standard recognizable okay. formation. I want to pair uh, up my key couple. Ooh, that was pair. So recycle. <laughs> Okay, bang. I want to resolve my square. I need to find my secondary couple and pair them up. Oh, this is so okay. hard. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. Vera left. Yep. Ferris wheel. Why? What are you going to do after your Ferris wheel? Um, oh, what is it? Oh, I lost my, um, I forgot that one. Um, no, it's not, no problem doing it. I just want to know um, you, you've got something a, in mind I could tell. Yeah, I, I have it written down as a resolve from there. That's a Ferris wheel. And I'm trying to remember if it's the past. I, remember, I don't have my notebook out either. Usually I have it sitting in front of me. Um, be passed through, swing through, right, my friend, or pass through, swing okay. through. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 and there's nothing wrong with that. You've got to a formation, you recognize it, you know a known get out, use it. Nothing wrong. Here's another perfectly good get out from this position. Bend the line, circle left. Okay. Nothing wrong with it. But did you see how fast and how easy that is by normalized pair up your key couple? You resolve 50% of the square immediately. And then getting that lady, that corner lady in there, you resolve 75%. But of that 75%, probably 80 to 90% of the time, you're going to be... Um, resolved. That side couple will be paired up or close as near as is the swearing that you're either doing a bend the line circle left or a pass through wheel and deal and you've only got two options from there. Okay now Cece you wanted to, did anybody else have any more questions?